Today on Toy Shiz, we're going to have a rag fragging good time. Let's talk toys. Welcome back, everyone. Toy Shiz here, and I am back yet again to give you guys another fresh look, courtesy of my friends over at McFarland Toys. And today, we are totally checking out their brand new DC multiverse. We got Superboy Prime, straight from Infinite Crisis. Now, that's how, with this iteration of Superboy Prime, that's how I would say I'd know him best i absolutely was obsessed with infinite crisis back in the day and i love that he's in that cell and he draws the s on his chest that was uh, odd right but he recently showed up again in death metal hence probably why yeah he kind of got a double dip for an action figure and on the back of the packaging you see him floating all right there and here's the barcode as well if you want to go ahead and screen grab that now i'm sure you're all been waiting for the main man here and we got the last zarnian lobo and you know what <laughs> looks a lot better than the photos right or the press photos lobo this is the dc rebirth version of lobo and i'll say this is lobo to me to be quite honest with you the cigar chomping fragging driving the motorcycle the space motorcycle and just busting heads but most importantly it's his voice is brad garrett and superman the animated series was my main look into this character and every time i see lobo it's it's brad garrett's voice it's just a classic rag fragging voice for that character and on the back of the packaging was the initial press photos that we saw and it really did this figure no favors because it looks a lot better when you have it in hand, to be quite honest with you, here's the barcode as well if you want to go ahead and screen grab it. So this is going to be fun, a little twofer for you. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at the brand new DC Multiverse Lobo and Superboy Prime by McFarlane Toys. And while I got you guys here at ask, please do consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, Old Toys, New Toys, Daily News Updates. I guarantee you'll find something here that you like. Now, here are the two figures all taken out of the packaging. And I'll tell you right now, they're rather light on the accessories, but you do get two new sculpts, and they're rather detailed sculpts. I'll bite missing a few paint apps here and there but we'll kick it off with superboy prime he does come with a flight stand not the black stand but superboy prime is one of those weird creepy cool characters that i like and i think they did a great job in the head sculpt although i will say he's kind of looking off to the corner a bit too much i wish he was looking more straight on yes the flesh colored tone could have used just a bit of a wash to kind of bring him more to life he's got the nice s right there all the yellows all the wires the power suit the anti-monitor suit that lets him absorb sunlight i really like the way that they did that the wires do not get in the way and i just like the way that looks i think that's why also i like the way superboy prime is in the comics the blues are nice the red is nice everything just looks good in terms of the color choices he really pops in that sense as far as articulation wise that that's where it gets to be a little bit jumbled here and there especially let's say in the arms this is about as much as you can do with the arms they'll just go down to the side and it's too light he has really huge gappage right there in his waist area he'll rotate at the upper diaphragm and he will crunch you do get a crunch out of him so that's kind of cool and he'll go back as well but yeah he's very awkward in the midsection i'll say that he can do the splits he can kick out the wires again do not get in the way and i rather like that because of the recent black series mandalorian boba fett figures they do and they really snap and they don't do you any kind of service. These are actually working with you. With the arms, you got double jointed. Again, the hands, the skin color could have used a little bit of paint, a little bit of shading, something to that degree to make it pop because in hand, he's very plasticky looking. He does have butterfly joints as well. And I'll tell you right now, the main thing with this figure is that you want him to fly, right? I mean, Superboy Prime with the armor, as great as it looks, this is about as much as you can do with the arms. So you can't really get him in a good flying position. He's more of a hovering Superboy Prime. And extra hands would have been great because he feels like one of those 
weird, awkward speakers in front of a crowd. He doesn't know what to do with his hands. I absolutely love the cape on this guy. I think it's sculpted well. It's very total justice, like the old Kenner toy line. Something about that. It's just what strikes me. I like the, the windswept nature of it. The boots are good. Paint would have been nice. Just a little bit more accent, more details to really make this guy pop because the sculpt is there on him. He's just missing a few paint apps here and there that really would have made him come to life a bit better. Now, of course, let's get into the main man. Comes with a stand and here is Lobo. And right off the bat, I can tell you, this is a giant figure. Quite the price tag at 20 bucks, right? For a Lobo. I actually do like the face sculpt. He looks so much better in hand from the press photos. I can't even tell you. He's got some blue in his hair. It makes him pop. His red eyes, his gums are painted, his teeth, everything looks really nice in the face. And I think that the snarling look really adds to it. He's just missing a cigar at this point. I mean, that's the kind of face where you expect that he could be chomping on a cigar. His vest is very cool. It's just all tattered and rags and everything else. He's got some big, massive arms with some veins, very white, rocky, gray, craggy skin. And I like the look of that. It's less plasticky like the Superboy Prime. It's got a bit of a crunch. It'll go back and forth. He'll twist at the upper diaphragm and the waist. And in the midsection, I mean, I wish they would have painted the belt, put a red star on there. He kicks out. He's got some really cool skull knee pads. That would have been cool at the base of the knee pad to have teeth. So it looks like it's like opening and closing like a mouth, you know what I mean? But on the boots and such, that's where it's kind of missing some paint, straps and things that you would expect McFarlane to have painted. He's got some good feet articulation. He's got the toe. Again, everything, like, let's say, on the front is painted nicely, but on the back of the boot, it's missing some paint apps. We'll just say that. With this chain, now, I remember seeing this in the press photo again and going, oh, this should have been like a metal chain. It's actually not a bad accessory. I actually do like it, and it works in the sense of if you're going to give him a chain, if you ain't got to give him a weapon, I'm glad that they gave him this. And it simply just slips on and off his wrist if you want to go that route, which his wrists and his hands are nice, but this would have been the perfect figure for some extra hands, like a thumb up kind of hands. He's pointing at himself or a fisted hand, something like that. But the back of the jacket that's some classic Lobo right there. That bite me fanboy, right? And it looks like stitching and it looks very cool. I mean, it, they went all out on the back. They put a lot of nice paint on there. Yeah, the red, put a red right there on the belt buckle. Come on. And on the shirt, you know, he's got holes and such. You should have seen more of his skin. But overall, I would say I'm very happy with the way this guy came out. Again, a big, massive figure. He can step on Superman. And yeah, he's telling him I'm the main man. And so this figure really does come across as having a lot of personality. If he would have had some guns or maybe one day they make his motorcycle, that would have been cool. But look at him in comparison scale wise. I mean, both these figures are 20 bucks basically. And then next to Batman, the new three Jokers Batman, he looks great. He's a big, massive figure. He's a lot of fun. And Superboy Prime, don't get me wrong, I like this figure, but I'm a fan of Superboy Prime, so I'm kind of eh, a little bit more biased towards it. When you have him, let's say, flying, like Infinite Crisis style, right? They're going to fly him into the sun. That's where maybe having extra hands, maybe a snarling head would have been nice to really go that route. And also, scale-wise, he's incredibly tall. He's taller than Superman. It's Superboy, right? Smaller. But, yeah, it's the scaling on this guy. He's a little bit off. I think it works with Lobo. I think it's definitely off with Superboy. But, again, he looks good when he's in that flight mode and he's going up against Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps. And if you were wondering, yeah, Lobo fits really well on top of the death metal bike. <laughs> that can definitely stand in. I mean, if they ever decide to do the Lobo space bike, which would be amazing. But... In either case, yeah, he fits on there rather well. And just to kind of show you a comparison with the Lobo that came before. This was the last, basically the last of the Mattel. He was the build-a-figure for them. You see how drastic a change. This old Mattel one just doesn't even compare. That's a good-looking face sculpt compared to that one. And, I mean, just for fun, if you wanted to go Marvel versus DC, yeah, have some Wolverine action. What a fight that would be. Am I right? So that's going to wrap it up for my look at the brand new McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Lobo from DC Rebirth. And then, of course, Superboy Prime from Infinite Crisis. 
Now, these are two characters that I really enjoy, right? So you look at them and you go, okay, there are some things that would have been really nice if they added. The weapons thing, of course, that's the whole WB mandate at the moment. So we're not going to be getting weapons with Lobo, but we can all dream, right? At least he's got his chain. Superboy Prime, I think, if anything, extra hands would have been nice and just a little bit tighter articulation. He's kind of sloppy in that sense when you start to move him around. But all the wires, everything else work with you, but he gets real gappy and it doesn't really pose well unless you have him in kind of a hovering mode. Lobo, I like him a whole heck of a lot better than I thought I was. After those photos, I'm telling you, I was like, oh boy. <laughs> they did Lobo weird, but I'm happy to say that I actually really do like this figure. I like the size of this figure. I like that he is Lobo. He looks mean, he looks nasty, and I'll just reiterate, yeah, you give him a cigar and you got yourself one good looking Lobo. I'll bite he does have some missing paint apps. And those are things that are nitpicks, just to point that out. I would like to see more paint here and there. Yes, I can say I'm happy with the figure all day. But when you get used to a certain amount of paint apps from McFarlane Toys, it would be nice to see those show up again from time to time between each figure. Am I right? But I am curious to know what you guys think about these two new figures. Are they for you? Will you be grabbing? Comment below. Let me know. Let's talk everything Lobo and Superboy Prime. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, best Lobo moment, punches Superman. Because he didn't want him to think he was going soft on him after he saved him from the Preserver. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.